Hey everybody, thank you so much for spending another Sunday afternoon with me. I love the Lord and I love talking about the Lord and I just appreciate y'all coming back so we can talk about how awesome God is every week. So I saw a post, uh, a friend posted on Facebook and it was a picture of two hands. And on one hand was the writing God and it said, or I'm sorry, was the writing me and it said, I messed up bad. On the other hand was writing that read, God, and it, and it read, your mistakes don't define you. And then written underneath that was Psalms 37, 24. And I just love that God doesn't care about the things that I've done. I mean, yes, I do have, um, I do go back to that uh, shame and that regret sometimes, but I love that God is a forgiving God. And I love that God is quick to forgive. And, and you know, no matter what we've done, and thank the Lord, we don't look like some of the things that we've done. Thank the Lord we can bounce back from the things that we've done. And I just love that God is a forgiving God. And isn't that amazing? I mean, when you think about it, we don't deserve God's grace. We don't deserve God's mercy. Now, does that mean that I can go out and party and I can say, well, I'm covered by God's grace, so God's going to forgive me, so it's okay. I'm going to go I'm going to go do me. I'm going to go do what makes me feel good. No, that's not the case. The Bible says that we have to go to God with a sincere and humble heart, and God will be quick to forgive us. But if we go to God beforehand and say, well, God, I'm going to sin. I'm going to go party. I'm going to go do this, you know, but I know you're going to forgive me, so I'm good. That's not what God means by going to him with a sincere heart. And, you know, when you become a Christian, when you become saved, God will also begin to take those earthly, those fleshly desires from you. You should have less and less of those desires in your heart. And God's going to begin to take those things from you. The Bible tells us all about the things that we have to rid of our lives. Shame, envy, anger, resentment, shame. There's a lot of things that the Bible is very specific that we have to rid of our lives. And if you're being convicted in your heart of something, if you're hearing that still small voice telling you that something is not right, you need to listen to that because that is the Holy Spirit um, convicting you. And if you're feeling that something isn't right, you need to listen to that voice. See, as a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit that will lead you and guide you. But the Holy Spirit will also tell you when something that you're doing isn't pleasing to the Lord. And we have to learn to listen to the Holy Spirit. And that means that we have to talk less and listen more. Now, the world is going to tell you that it's okay to do what you want. The world is going to tell you, you only live once. Do you. Do what makes you happy. Do what makes you feel good. But that's not right. I mean, we're flawed. We're flawed from the very beginning. We're born into sin from the moment that we are born. We come into sin from that very moment that we come into this world. And it's not wise to do whatever we want. It's not wise to do what makes us feel good. Um, because as we don't know what's good for us. God knows what's good for us. So that's the reason why this world is in the mess that it's in today. Because we're listening, we're listening less to the Holy Spirit and we're listening more to this world. A heart that is changed is truly changed. And a heart that is changed does what's uplifting to God. So we have to be submissive to God. So we don't, you know, we're, we're flawed as humans. We don't know what's good, what's good for us. That's why I pray for God's will in my life. I mean, you know, as, as a Christian, you're not going to be accepted by this world. And that's okay. You know, as Christians, we're not going to be accepted by this world. We're different. The world is not going to accept us. And you have to be okay with that as a Christian. You have to be okay that it doesn't matter if this world loves you. We don't belong to this world. We belong to God as Christians. And we need to um, remember that. We need to be praying for God's will in our lives. And I want to be praying for God's will in my children's lives. I want to pray for God's will in my husband's life. I already know that God has his hand and in, in, in his will in my life, but I still want to be praying for that because I don't know what's good for me. God knows what's good for me, and I want to talk less 
listen more to the Holy Spirit so the Holy Spirit can lead me and guide me. And my job as a Christian is to make sure that when people uh, in the world, you know, even though I'm not accepted by the world, my job as a Christian is to make sure that people around me can look at me and can tell by my actions, can tell by the way that I speak, can tell by the way that I live that I am a Christian. And, you know, if I'm just worried about me, if I'm worried about what makes me feel good, a lot of times I'm going to be missing that there's somebody out there that needs to be brought to Jesus. So I have to be willing to let the Holy Spirit lead me. And, you know, that that's going to happen from day to day. There's going to be people that are brought into your path and you're going to be comfortable in your little bubble as a Christian. But that's not what God has called us to do. God has called us to bring others to Christ. And if since we're living in a world that is full of sin, full of uh, sinners, full of all these evil things, it's our job to make sure that we are bringing others to Christ because we all want to go to heaven. That's the goal. We all want to make it to heaven. And uh, so we need to be uh, that shining light. We need to be that person when when you're out in the world that everybody can look at you and tell that something is different about you and that you are a Christian. And they should go look at you and say, I want to be like that. I want to have that humble spirit. I want to be slow to anger. I want to be quick to forgive. People should look at you and want to um, have those same qualities that you have because you are a Christian. And uh, so I pray uh, that God... Um, will just have his his will, his perfect will in my life because God's will is perfect. I don't know what's good for me, but God does know what's good for me. So I just pray over my family. I pray over my children, my husband, um, that God will, you know, have his um, have his will in, in our lives and that I will be able to trust God for his will in my life. So Psalms 37, 23 through 24 says, the Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. Though he may stumble, he will not fall. For the, Lord, for the Lord upholds him with his hands. I mean, I love that. You know, why did God put this word in this, these people's hearts that wrote these books in the Bible? God did that because he knew that there were going to be times that we would stumble. But the Bible tells us that if we trust in him, if we are a child of God, which we are, that though we may stumble, he's not going to let us fall. I mean, isn't that amazing? God is not going to let us, he's not going to let us fall, but we have to trust in him. You know, God knew, knew that there were going to be times that we would stumble. God knew that there were going to be times that we would doubt. That's the reason why he put these things in the Bible for us. And I just love that. And God, you know, and there's going to be times when we make stupid mistakes. I mean, there's times when I still do things where I'm like, okay, I that is not the way I should have handled that. That's not what I should have said. Um, you know, I'm a Christian, but there's going to be times when I'm when I make mistakes, and God knows that, and God also knows my heart, and He knows how much how hard I try. I'm trying. He knows how much I've changed. He knows where I was five years ago. And where I am today. Um, I don't deserve what God has done for me, but um, y'all, this is what God does for his children. No matter what I've done in my past, no matter what I've said, where I've been, God will hold me up when I stumble. Psalms 91 says God will send his angels to hold me up with their hands so I won't even hurt my foot on a stone. Isn't that amazing? Things happen every single day, but God is going to hold me up. God is going to send his angels to hold me up in their hands. And um, I don't deserve it. But that's what God does for his children. You know, some of, us have sub some of us have suffered some very bad consequences for the things that we've done. And that's just part of it. You know, if you make stupid mistakes, you're going to have consequences. But that doesn't mean that God doesn't love you. That just means, that's just a natural part of life. You make mistakes, you do things, you suffer the consequences. But God can restore your life. God can restore all of those years that the locusts 
ate, all of those years that the, that the worm ate, God will restore those years to you and give you more. But you're going to have to do some things. You're going to have to change your life. You're going to have to change your heart. You're going to have to live differently than you did when you were living in the world. Um, but, I'm, but I'm telling you, you will not regret it. There's never been a time where I've regretted giving my heart to God. I'll never go back to the person that I was. And I trust in God and I trust God's will for my life. And I know that God's got a will in my life. And God has a will for your life. And um, he's got a will for us all. And God is a forgiving God. When you become a Christian, the choices that you make should be different, okay, than when you were living in the world. I'm not going to do the same things that I used to do. I'm not going to think the way that I did. You know, I am growing in the Lord. And if you're a Christian, then you should be always growing in the Lord. Um, you know, like I talked about last week, you should never feel like you've learned all there is to know because there's not. If you're living in your little space as a Christian, yet you're not bringing others to Christ, well, what good is, is that? What good is it for you to go to heaven, but you've got an opportunity to help save the people around you but you don't take that opportunity to bring them to the Lord. God wants us to be witnessing to others and to be bringing others to Christ. God cares about you. You know, he cares about every aspect of your life. God cares about every single thing you have going on in your life. No matter how insignificant it seems to you, God knows and God cares about you. And God has a plan in your life. You know, if you feel like you don't matter, if you feel like, Nobody sees you. God sees you. And God has a plan for your life bigger and better than what you could ever imagine for yourself. It doesn't matter if you've got all the money in the world. It, God may still have something different planned for you. And I don't want to be so caught up in money and all these materialistic things that I miss what God has really, what God has planned in my life. I've got a, I've got a vision for my own life, but God has a vision for for your life it may be totally different than what you are thinking that your life should be and the problem for a lot of people is that they don't want to trust God and trust God that you know trust that God has his best interest at heart but uh, he does and I don't want to miss my blessing by uh, being selfish and doing what I want to do if the Holy Spirit is leading me to do something I'm going to do that and as scary as it may be if I'm feeling led to do something different in life I'm going to do that and I'm going to trust in God because I know that God's not going to let me fall you know I may stumble along the way but God's not going to let me fall God's not going to let you fall but you have to give your heart to God and you have to have trust that God has your best interests at heart you know no matter no matter what mistakes you've made God doesn't hold that against you uh, all we have to do is ask, ask for forgiveness and keep making those conscious efforts to make better choices and as Christians we should we should be improving we should be making better choices but if you stump if you stumble just trust in God trust in God that he's going to hold you up but you have to give your heart to God okay give your heart to God trust in the Lord so let's keep making better choices and stop living for the world and start living for Jesus Thank you all so much. Let's pray before we go. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, that we still have this outlet. We ask God that you continue to bless our leaders in our nation to have discernment and wisdom to do what's right for our people. We ask God that you'll continue to heal those that have been affected by this disease, Father God. And we're just asking for your perfect will in all of this. Heavenly Father, we know that your return is coming soon. And we want to be ready, Heavenly Father. And we pray, Lord God, that we will be ready and that our friends and family will be ready, Heavenly Father. Give us the boldness that we need to bring others to you because we know that you are coming back soon. We thank you for sending your Son to die on the cross for our sins. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Love y'all, and I'll see y'all again next week. Bye. Hey,
Thank you.